I had is, hey, hey, we're going to talk to Steve Kerr. So, uh, so that's pretty exciting for us, and and we welcome you in. Thank you for coming on. No, well, thanks for thanks for having me. Uh, you mentioned the tournament. Can we not? Talk about the Arizona Princeton game. Is that all right with oh, you? Yeah. Uh, no, well, well, Steve, no, anyway, yeah, I had it yeah, actually. We're, Mark and I were going to bury it until much later. Yeah, we're, we're going to try to start with some positives. We, but uh, we, we were going to give man. you an Arizona Draymond Green technical foul one two punch that we really thought was going to get uh, you, Coach. Uh, yeah, too too soon. Okay, too soon on both counts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's start with one of them that we're not. There's no way we're getting around. What, what's your, what's your reaction to uh, to the league not rescinding the, the the technical and 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 no Draymond tomorrow night? Oh, I didn't expect it to be rescinded. Um, you know that was pretty clear. If you throw a ball at, at, at someone, you're going to get a tech. I mean, I I thought there were a couple early in the year that uh, that should have been rescinded couple double technicals where you know nothing really happened but they just automatically sort of call a double double tech just to just to calm things down the problem with those are you know as they accumulate they uh they come back to to get you like like on this one but you know this is uh this is the way it goes and uh, we'll we'll be all right we'll 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 uh we'll bounce back we'll be ready to go tomorrow Steve, does it seem now in the modern association that we've lost the art of conversation between players and officials? It feels like officials are far quicker to tech players and players are much more eager now to argue calls than back when you played. It does seem worse, I think, uh, in a lot of ways. Um, it just seems like there's there's more back and forth than there, there used to be. I mean, players have always... You know, gone at refs, and and there's you know always going to be disputes on calls. I mean, practically every call in the game is a judgment call. Um, but it does seem like it's a little bit worse these days. I, I don't know why. Steve, uh, I I know you you might get tired of, of of this question, but I feel like it has to be asked again. And so, who's flying your plane, and how can we get them fired? Like what what what? What happens when you guys go on the road? You know, it's um, it's inexplicable, and it, it, I mean, if I if I had the reason, I would, you know, I would let you know. Um, but it's I just I don't know what to say. I mean, the, the Ringer actually wrote a great piece yesterday. You guys should check it out on our our road woes and the the shooting differential and percentages um, for our opponents home and road is just unheard of. And um, I don't, I just, you know, you, you look at all the, all the data, all the shot charts, all that stuff. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I, I do think there have been some close losses on the road that, that we um, really could have closed better you know, and, and done a better job finishing games that we didn't. And that's definitely hurt us, but some of it is shooting variability and it's kind of a, kind of a weird deal. And we all keep waiting for that to kind of even itself out over the course of a season. Yet you look at the points per game allowed this year and it's far higher than, than ever before. Have you been able to pinpoint where the breakdown and the defense has been not only on the road, but at home this year? Well, I think that the, um, if you look at last night's game, I thought the the big issue was uh, penetration. I mean, you know, we're down a lot of guys that we were really shorthanded last night, and uh, the you know we're we're trying to guard Paul George and and uh, and Kawhi Leonard with some you know smaller players uh, with our uh, you know missing Wigs and, and Gary Payton. And, um, so I thought the penetration of those guys forced our big guys to come help. And then once the big guys help, you got uh, you got the rebounding of, of uh, you know Zubats and Plumley behind the play. So I think that is you know it, over the course of the season, if you look at our defense when we have struggled, it's been you know penetration leading to rotations and and missed box outs. Steve Kerr with us here, Willard and Dibbs. They're in Atlanta getting ready for uh, Atlanta first tomorrow, then Memphis. On Saturday, Steve, we've heard for for so many years, of course, that Draymond Green is is the heartbeat of the team. He's the centerpiece of the defense, the the point guard on offense. Um, give us the anatomy of a game without him. 
What what do you guys do to make up for that? Well, there there is no making up for Draymond, Draymond's absence. I mean, you, you obviously you uh, you know you have to figure out what lineup combinations make the most sense, and uh, and you try to put together the best game plan you can based on your opponent. But <clears throat> Draymond does stuff that nobody else can do. He's a he's a defensive genius, uh, absolute wizard on that side of the floor, and. A lot of stuff that he does, you know, we don't even scheme. He just, he sniffs something out that the opponent is doing. And, um, you know, all of a sudden he, he blows up the play and we're going back the other way. So, uh, he's a, Draymond is a once in a generation defensive player. So, uh, without him, it's, it's not as simple as just saying, Hey, here's what we're going to do. It's really just a collective effort to compete and try to get the job done. One player who will have to step up in his absence will be Jonathan Kaminga, who seemingly has earned his minutes over the course of the last month or two because of his defense. Where would you highlight his biggest defensive improvement this year, Coach? I think uh, just his overall game awareness, you know, and and uh, understanding of what we're trying to uh, to accomplish while we're out on the floor. Uh, he's he's got the physical tools to be a, an excellent defender, and that's why we put him on Kawhi last night, and you know we put him on the best best players because you know that's that's what he's built to do. But uh, it takes years and years uh, in the NBA to to really understand everything that's happening, understand the nuances, and so it's uh, this is a great learning experience for JK. He's doing great getting better, um, but he's going to get a lot better um, over the next couple of years. Uh, Coach, uh, while you're talking about being shorthanded, I'm, I'm sure listeners are curious about the report that came out earlier with regard to Steph Curry being questionable. What what, what can you tell us about his thumb and, and, and his possibilities tomorrow night? Well, I expect him to play, uh, but he did get banged up last night and so he's on the injury report our training staff will uh, will make sure he's okay uh but uh, i you know i think a lot of this stuff is just protocol if somebody is uh injured you have to report it and um so we list him as questionable but i i think he's likely to play okay that that's good to hear and then uh, you know you mentioned andrew wiggins and and with all due respect to the fact that you have already answered this steve uh, you know, Colin Cowherd yesterday said that he spoke to someone and, and he had a report that it was now, quote, likely that uh, that, that, that Wiggins was not going to come back this year. What, what's your reaction to that comment? Well, I, we haven't heard that from from Andrew or any, anyone else uh, affiliated with him. So um, that's that's just speculation. How challenging is it to have to go forward with a new game plan each and every game? not knowing that Andrew Wiggins will be available, or is there frustration in knowing that Andrew Wiggins won't be there and having to rely on unproven younger players all the time? No, it's, it's not frustration. Um, you know, I, I think um, every season has its challenges and different uh, things that happen, different things that occur, and you just roll with it. You just figure it out as you go. But, um uh, you know, we've obviously given Andrew the space that he needs to deal with something that's that's uh, much more important than the, the and um, so it's our job to just go out and get and uh, you know try to try to win games without him. But we we support him and can't wait till he's back. But fully support him and uh, you know we, we will continue to do so. Steve Kerr with us here, Willard and Dibbs, 95.7 The Game, presented by Xfinity. Steve, another interesting question I heard earlier this week, and I, and I wonder how you would respond to it, because you just said, right, every year has its own challenges, and I wonder how you would put this year's challenges into words. If, if someone said to you or asked you, what are the key reasons or reason why this team is so different than, than last year's team? How do you answer that? Well, personnel-wise, we're, we're uh, you know we're, we're quite a bit different you know, in terms of uh, where we were a year ago. I think we were a much more veteran team last year. You know, with with GP and Otto Porter, Belly, Damian Lee. You know, Juan. It was a team that that had a lot more uh, you know sort of experience and, and corporate knowledge than this one. So. You know, it's and and then this year is also different because uh, 
you know, you we, we, last year we went into that year having missed the playoffs two years in a row. We had a, a chip on our shoulder. Um, this year, you know, we're defending champs. There's a lot that goes into that and and with that. And I think, uh, you know, there's a there's there's just a different vibe this year than there was a year ago. And but that's that's the case. Every year is different, and you just have to figure it out as you go. Well, you have created must-watch uh, entertainment in the regular season. That's something that we haven't always had. So I guess thanks for that. Uh, but a lot of fans, <laughs> I mean, gosh, we can't turn this thing off. I mean, a lot of fans asking about Jordan Poole. There's two camps. There's the let Jordan cook and go crazy, and then there's the Jordan Poole plays too recklessly. How do you balance out these two Jordan Pools in terms of messaging to a young player? Well, it's uh, it's just that's what coaching is, you know. You uh, you're trying to um, you know really help a guy get better and uh, empower him, and at the same time um, learn uh, you know kind of how to how to win and what's crucial in terms of um, you know going about uh, winning winning a game. And so the constant battle you you want to really give Jordan. Uh, the the rope that he needs to attack and to be aggressive, um, and then you also have to work on some of his inexperience and his tendencies that uh, can be counterproductive at times. So it's, that's just what coaching is, and that's what part of part of this season has been about. Steve Kerr with us, and you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM, and HD1, San Francisco, always live on Twitch, YouTube, and the free Odyssey app. Steve, I, I, I'm sure you've heard it, you know, uh, because you were a part of the last dance uh, when, it, when it actually happened the first time around, and people have used that phrase because at some point, everything that we've known Warrior Ball to be over the last 10 years is, is going to be different. I, I wonder, it, like, just kind of what what your sensibilities on that are. I mean, I know a lot of us, a lot of our listeners feel like transition is near. Are, do, do you get reflective about stuff like that uh, at all at this time? No. I mean, I, you know, we get we get caught up in the season. We're just trying to win the next game. And um, I, 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 I know that this has been a special era to be part of with the Warriors and we're the, the whole thing is, can, you know, how long can we keep it going? Because you watched last night's games, uh, Steph sure looks like he's got plenty left in the tank. And, uh, you know, you watch the night before and, you know, Clay gets 33 in, in the first half and, you know, Draymond's play all year long has been really good on the defensive end as well as, you know, getting us organized on offense. So these guys still have, uh, plenty in the tank, and we want to keep this thing going as as long as we can. But um, you can't get too wrapped in, wrapped up in that stuff. You just, you know, in our job, you, we just try to prepare for the next game and keep it going. And part of preparing for the next game is realizing no Draymond Green, Iguodala's out with the fractured wrist. What's the status of Ty Jerome and Anthony Lamb and their ability to get reinserted into the roster to give you some of that depth down the stretch? Yeah, so we, we you know we have one roster spot open, and it's up to the front office to uh, to to make that decision. I know they're going through, um, you know, their possibilities right now, literally as we speak. And and uh, I, yeah, I, there's no doubt we're going to need uh, you know to fill that spot because we've between the injuries and the absences, uh, we're we're a little thin right now. All right, that's long enough. What about that Arizona game? <laughs> Cry it out loud, Coach. Oh, what? What the heck? I mean, geez, oh Coach. My gosh. We were we were on the plane and we didn't have uh, you know couldn't get it on on the on the screen and we were just following the score and then all of a sudden we landed and the, you know the last two minutes are on we got it we got it on and uh, that was tough to watch really really tough that's Tommy Lloyd's my guy he's a great coach and uh, that's my school. Oh, man, this tournament is so devastating. It's so brutal when you lose. Do you guys have any, like, fun bracket stuff going on, or is it just kind of like alma mater trash talk between, you know, your school and other players' schools among the team? No, we got the bracket. I tore mine up as soon as the plane Right. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, hey, what's the what's the story? I'll be honest with you. I just heard about this not too long ago. Uh, you know, Kirk Carissa... Who, who's on on the, the Wildcats? He's named after you. Is that is that right? 
Yeah, so his dad apparently was a Bulls fan in the 90s, and uh, so he named his son after me. And then the kid ends up going to Arizona, He had, and he had no idea that I went to Arizona as well. So uh, and the, now he, you know, he wears my old number, and so I've, I've got people calling me all the time asking me, hey, is that your son? And uh, the answer is no. It's just a, a kid from Estonia. <laughs> but, uh, a good story. Yeah, it's a great story. So I, I won't mention what he went for uh, from the field today. I'll, I'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave that out of this, uh, this fun story. <laughs> Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's got to be a little surreal, though, because, Steve, you and I are about the same age, and you start to realize that, you know, your kids are, heck, old enough to already be out of college, and now you've got somebody in college named after you. It's got to be both uh, humbling and also a little bit of a slap in the face at how old we are. <laughs> well, I have a granddaughter now, too, so uh, age, is, age is winning. <laughs> I'm losing the, the race. To age. Oh, man. Uh, well, Grandpa Kurt right here yeah. on uh, 95.7. All, all right. That, let, let's dive in r- real quick on, on these games, okay? Hawks, uh, Grizzlies. Uh, we know there's no jaw. That's obviously, you know, kind of a special matchup for you guys. There's some some emotion there. Uh, but let's start with with, uh, with the Hawks. What are the specific challenges in, in this one with no Draymond Green? Well, Trey Young is uh, terrific. Uh, pick and roll player, great lob passer, and they've got shooters you know around their lob threads. So they're they've they've always been a difficult uh, cover for everybody. And uh, and without Draymond, that becomes even more difficult because they put you in a lot of difficult spots trying to cover that pick and roll game. Uh, so yeah, I mean it's you know we're on the road, and uh, I I did like our effort last night. I like the grit. I like the intensity we came came out with and uh hopefully that continues tomorrow but we gotta gotta try to get a w i know you're focused solely on your own team and winning games but do you do much scoreboard watching particularly with mike brown and sacramento in in action uh coming up here as we speak against brooklyn yeah i mean i watch i watch the scores the scoreboard every single night and and yeah we're all well aware exactly where we are and where everybody else is and Steve, with the game that's also coming up this weekend against Memphis, is there anything? And I know you know coaches try to keep things normal, but is there anything different that you do in terms of getting the team emotionally ready for for going against that team for all, for all the obvious reasons? No, 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 we don't need to. It's a great atmosphere there and uh, fun fun matchup, so uh, we don't have to do anything like that. We just go play. Well, Steve, I know the the men are out at Arizona, but uh, the Lady Wildcats uh, start their tournament tomorrow. So perhaps you can turn your attention uh, to the other side, on the other side of the bracket. You know it. You know it. I'll be rooting on my cats. <laughs> nice, Steve. Uh, Steve, <laughs> we're, we're excited to talk to you weekly. This was a whole lot of fun. Thank you so much. All right. Hey, thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks, Steve. All right. Steve Kerr in Atlanta. Uh, man, there's uh, a whole lot to chew on there.